no money. I had no heat, no air. I had a mattress on the floor, and the apartment was infested with fleas. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? My girlfriend at the time was killed in a car accident. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming. I lost my career. I got the, the show was canceled after six years. I think I was getting letters from kids that almost committed suicide but didn't because of what I did. I didn't go to college uh, here, and as uh, I don't know if President Cowan knows, I didn't go to college at all, any college. When I finished school, I was completely lost. I really, I, I had no ambition. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I did everything from I shucked oysters, I was a hostess, I was a bartender, I was a waitress, I painted houses, I sold vacuum cleaners. I had no idea. And I thought I'd just finally settle on some job and I would make enough money to pay my rent, maybe have basic cable, maybe not. I didn't really have a plan. My point is that by the time I was your age, I really thought I knew who I was, but I, I had no idea. The way I ended up on this path was from a very tragic event. I was uh, I, maybe 19 and my girlfriend at the time was killed in a car accident. And I passed the accident and I didn't know it was her and I kept going. And I found out shortly after that it was her. And I was living in a basement apartment. I had no money. I had no heat, no air. I had a mattress on the floor and the apartment was infested with fleas. And I was soul searching. I was like, why is she suddenly gone and there are fleas here? I don't understand. There must be a purpose and wouldn't it be so convenient if we could just pick up the phone and call God and ask these questions. And I started writing and what poured out of me was an imaginary conversation with God, which was one-sided. And I finished writing it, and I looked at it, and I said to myself, and I hadn't even been doing stand-up ever. There was no club in town. I said, I'm going to do this on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and I'm going to be the first woman in the history of the show to be called over to sit down. Several years later, I was the first woman in the history of the show, and only woman in the history of the show, to sit down because of that phone conversation with God that I wrote. Would you welcome Ellen DeGeneres. Thank you. I started this path of, of stand-up. It was successful and it was great, but it was hard because I was trying to please everybody and I had this secret that I was keeping that I was gay and I thought if people found out, they wouldn't like me, they wouldn't laugh at me. Then my career turned into, I got my own sitcom and uh, that was very successful, another level of success, and I thought, what if they find out I'm gay, then they'll never watch, and... I finally decided that I was living with so much shame and so much fear that I just couldn't live that way anymore, and I decided to come out and make it creative, and my character would come out at the same time, and it wasn't to make a political statement, it wasn't to do anything other than to free myself up from this heaviness I that mean, I was carrying I around, and I just wanted to be the truth. I mean, honest. Being who I am, and I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I can so lose my career. Tell people. I, mean, I, I just... did. Susan, I'm gay. I lost my career. I got the, the show was canceled after six years without even telling me. I read it in the paper. Um, the phone didn't ring for three years. I had no offers. Nobody wanted to touch me at all. Um, and yet I was getting letters from kids that almost committed suicide but didn't because of what I did. And I realized that I had a purpose. And it wasn't just about me and it wasn't about celebrity, but I felt like I was being punished. And it was a bad time. I was angry. I was sad. And then I was offered a talk show. And people that offered me the talk show tried to sell it and most stations didn't want to pick it up. Most people didn't want to buy it because they thought nobody would watch me. And uh, really when I look back on it, I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, it was so important for me to lose everything because I found out what, what the most important thing is, is to be true to yourself. 
ultimately that's that's what's gotten me to this place. I don't live in fear. I'm free. I have no secrets, and I know I'll always be okay because no matter what, I know who I am. So, in conclusion, when I was younger, I thought success uh, was something different. I thought when I grow up, I want to be famous. I want to be a star. But my idea of success is different today. And as you grow, you'll realize the definition of success changes. For me, the most important thing in your life is to live your life with integrity and not to give in to peer pressure to try to be something that you're not. To live your life as an honest and compassionate person, to contribute in some way. So to conclude my conclusion, follow your passion, stay true to yourself, never follow someone else's path and everything will be fine. And I know that a lot of you are concerned about your future, but there's no need to worry. Some of the most devastating things that happen to you will teach you the most. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming.